Do you have any question, further question to elaborate? The Chief Minister is here. Yeah. The charter, uh, so to say. Uh, right from the beginning. Even Polo also <coughs> even asked Polo when he was not a minister yet. He was in the Transparency International Mal Malaysia. I said that you, you should put that in your integrity pledge. But uh, he refused when he was in Transparency International. Because when he's a minister now, even more unlikely. Even more unlikely. Some of them are taking a bit of time to try and organize themselves. Mainly the small SMEs. But otherwise, a lot of the big boys, the big employers are already complying. That will send with the elaborate. Now, if I, I may add to that part the issue, I think uh, when we embark on the minimum wages policy, I think uh, the government was very, very ambitious. Uh, even in developed countries such as Korea, they excluded uh, those employers with uh, 10 and less employees from the minimum wages policy. But we also had requested that, uh, at least uh, for the Malaysian context, those with uh, five employees and less should be excluded because they are really the small timers, thing like that. But uh, in the, of course, uh, wisdom of the government, they thought that everybody need to be included. So now I, I think the issue is that uh, some of the real small employers are not in a position to do that. Uh, Tan Sri, as I just now was mentioning about uh, childcare centers, things like that, and, and perhaps uh, for them to actually have uh, uh, to pay an employee of 900 ringgit to look after three children will be very, very expensive for them to do so. So it is not econ econ economically viable. So that's why now the latest talk is that to say that, okay, look, whether these people need to be excluded or not. Yeah? And of course, uh, I think some of the policies fail to take into account, say for example, people who pay based on productivity, people who pay, pay based on commission, the, uh, the, the peace rated thing like that. So, so now all these issues are coming back uh, to, to actually to be reformulated basically. So, so it's not going to be easy. It is the first time that you are trying to introduce the policy. And I think there are a lot of features here and there. Yeah. Okay. How about actually, this is uh, something that is uh, uh, not, uh, you know, ca cannot be just rejected uh, just like that. But uh, even in MEF, you are saying that we are all in trying to actually uh, have extra or increased wages for the local employees. What, what we even suggested is to say that forget about minimum wages, they should be paid based on their skill. Yeah? And, and in Malaysia, we have such thing as uh, SKM1, Sijil Kemarahan 1, Sijil Kemarahan 2, and 3. And if Malaysian can be paid based on the skill that are being stiffed, that is something that I think we can move on in moving on to, uh, to become a developed nation. So, you know, like what uh, uh, Yama Roma Chief Minister say, you know, we should be slow on the foreign workers because I think now the amount of remittances are really uh, actually killing us basically. And I, I think we, what we, we need to do is trying to increase the income of our own local employee so that they can spend more and actually enhance the, 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 what, the economic activity in the country itself. Yeah, in fact, uh, now the, the minimum wages policy is up for review. Uh, in fact, once in every two years. And of course, uh, these are the kind of things that uh, MEF is going to pursue with the authorities. Because MEF have, have five representatives within the National Wages Consultative Council. Yeah. Three of them are sitting here. Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah, Tan Sri Azman, uh, Mr. Ramadas, and myself. Is that including uh, giving more 
All along, we had been saying that the local workers, the mission workers, should be given priority. But uh, somehow, uh, you know, the, the, what the, the, the government thought that everybody should be paid equally. And, and, and this is where the, the, the problem is specific. Actually, the, the local the companies, the, the companies in Malaysia, don't have problem in trying to actually pay uh, better wages to the Malaysian workers. Provided, of course, they are, they, are, they are skillful, provided they are increasing their productivity. I think talking about productivity, I think that one of the major issues that now our productivity is something like, uh, you know, still very low compared to Singapore even. Singapore, the productivity average value per employee per year is 178,000 ringgit per year, whereas Malaysia is 58,000 ringgit per year per employee. It's very, very low. Yeah. Any question for the young woman? No, I'm okay. I'm very happy. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm very happy. <laughs> There's a lot of issues. Here. Another question. Uh, this is about the labor unions itself. Uh, the, the what? Labor unions. The ah. clause was such that uh, unions are not being recognized by the uh, employers. For instance, the electronic uh, uh, workers union. So, especially that, in that, the northern region, northern I know, but that region. one is a. It's got a long historical reason why it's like that. I, I'm not familiar with it. I don't know about it. Uh, uh, thank you for that uh, very sensitive issue. <laughs> but I think that the, the, the crux of the matter is that in order to be recognized under the Malaysian legal system, first is whether the union is competent to represent the employees of the uh, company or not. Because sometimes we thought that uh, certain company is electronic. But that company may not be electronic, it may be electrical. Yeah. So, 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 so those are the fine points that sometimes company and the union argue. And sometimes the matter cannot be resolved accordingly, it may go to court. And unfortunately, when it is parked in the court system, then sometimes it takes a long time to be decided. Yeah. And of course, after that, the law talks about whether the union has the majority or not uh, of the membership. You know. So if the, the union did not have the majority, then of course the company has every right to ask for secret ballot and if the secret ballot is uh, negative then of course the company is not obligated to actually uh, recognize the union and as employers basically as, an, an, as a responsible employer generation when we advise our membership we always say that be fair in what you are doing and make sure that you, you are actually taking action based on all the legal provisions yeah. thank you thank you otherwise we like concerns regarding the like the corporate provision liability. Corporate liability by SPRM. By SPRM that you mentioned about the speech. Yeah, the, uh, what I did mention just now, the issue is, I mean, they have to put some of those provisions in. I mean, these are very sensitive decisions that the ministry, the government must decide. Because you're putting all the blame to the employer, it's going to be very tough for us. And these are issues that must have a broad debate before you even, you know, put it in, or at least, you know, give everybody a fair chance, you know, because this issue is very serious. Otherwise, you cannot govern, and the employee community are running with business concern, and I think they should be given a chance to say something before you make it law. That's our stand. Thank you. Unless you have, yeah, be, no, right? I, I, I just want to. What? This is why we are saying, you know, you, you have this law, you know, you want to engage with the employee community, for example. We must give us a chance to say something about it. You don't push it down our throat. I don't think it's fair. No, I, I think I can understand why uh, Dan Shri Aswan says it's not fair. Because why is it only private sector yes. are subject to such rules and the public sector is not? Yes. So there should be equality, right, isn't it? Yeah. When you talk about minimum wage, for instance, then you should also apply to public sector workers, which it is, uh, there is uh, definitely. So just uh, when I say for 1,100 ringgit, I'm making this allocation for 1,100 ringgit per month. I've got to first make sure that my all my employees under the Penang State Government gets a minimum of 1,100, yeah. which they do. So that's why when you talk, you talk with authority and moral authority because you ensure that uh, you practice not only you practice what you preach, but uh, there is uh, uh, what do you call that uh, uh, equal treatment. So if you want to apply on the private sector number one, whether you apply 
also included on the public sector. Number one. Number two, isn't it too onerous that you are responsible for another person wrongdoing? Okay, if it's something within your control, which is what I suggested just now, you make sure that they have certain internal control requirements. They have to establish their internal control requirement. As far as maybe even the risk management department, yes. internal control. Now, if you don't have this internal control, then they should be penalized. Yes. yes. If the corruption happens, then companies should be like, corporate liability should be penalized. But if you have them, and it still happens, it's not fair. Because you cannot control human nature. Even in the best system in the world, there will still be people who will be corrupt. But then you will be, even the church also, in a mosque also, <laughs> in a temple also, this type of thing happens. Ah. Yeah. They, they even dare to steal from God, ah, don't talk about <laughs> ordinary private uh, companies. So I think that should be the basic. If you have controls, I think that you have actually complied, but if you don't have control, they should be penalized. I don't think that is a position, I don't know whether that is shared by the yeah. MES. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apparently, you also agree with me. Yeah. So I think that is our. Our, uh, ever, I mean, that's our uh, contention to the state government, to the federal government. Okay. Uh, Sorry, you can go ahead. Eric asked, uh, when, when would it be enforced, uh, this policy? Uh, 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 yeah, let us send those more details. You know, <coughs> when we had uh, this discussion with uh, authorities, uh, we are briefed to say that, uh, you know, they are intending to put uh, all this proposal to parliament in June. Sitting, but uh, like what uh, Tansi Yazman had mentioned, uh, currently the discussion with the uh, stakeholders, especially the private sector, is still uh, not there very much. Yeah? And we hope to have further discussion before this is being uh, pushed to Parliament. 